iOS has traditionally been smoother than Android, it's been snappier. Now why? And how have some Android manufacturers like OnePlus been able to win speed tests against iPhones? Well, let's find out in today's video. Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech and let's get started. If you do end up liking this video, please don't forget to turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon. Before we begin, I have a very simple question for you. It's an important question, you know, Team Apple or Team Android? Leave a comment down below. So why are iPhones so fast? The first reason here is optimization. Apple has optimized their hardware right from a chipset level to such an extent that right now their processors are closer to desktops rather than competing smartphones. So why can Android not do it? I mean, Qualcomm is pretty good at making chips, right? Hell, we even have Huawei making the same 7 nanometer chips like Apple's A12. So then where does the difference lie? To explain that, we're gonna have to take a peek at how an operating system or an OS works. At the bottom, we have the hardware level calls. On top of that, we have the kernel and on top of that, we have the higher level applications. So for iOS, what we have is the core level hardware, a hybrid Unix kernel and on top of that we have the system itself and all the apps that are written in yet another programming language called C Sharp. So if this were a burger, we have just three layers, a patty in the middle and two buns. Now for Android, we have the same hardware, a Linux monolithic kernel and a Java emulation layer and on top of that apps. So because of the Java emulation layer, Android is more like a jumbo burger with layers of lettuce and cheese, tomatoes stacked in between the buns and the patty. So let me ask you guys a simple question. Which burger would you be able to eat faster? The smaller one or the bigger jumbo one? The jumbo burger might taste better, but it is gonna slow you down. You're gonna, you know, eat it slower. The smaller one is the one that you can, you know, just finish off real quick. And that's kind of the reason why iOS is so fast. It keeps things simple and Android, while it has a lot of options, bells and whistles, features, it is inherently slower by design. Yes, yes, I know I'm oversimplifying things here a lot, but I'm just going in for ease of understanding more than accuracy, so I'm just keeping things simple. Now there is even more optimization going on on Apple's side. The A12 and A12X Bionic use microarchitecture that is written specifically to support iOS and its features and absolutely nothing else. Why is that important? Well, let's take an example, NFC. It's been in Android for a long time, now Apple also supports it, but you don't really get NFC on iOS, what you get is Apple Pay. And they've just built in support for that. But on Android, you get NFC based different kinds of payments, data transfers and a whole host of other functionality. Now, some brands can choose to enable it, while some others, like say for example, OnePlus with their OnePlus 2 can choose to skip it. Going back to the same example, the chip inside was the Snapdragon 810. Now, despite the OnePlus 2 not having NFC, still the Snapdragon 810 had to carry the microcode for NFC antennas and its various uses. Now, why? Because the 810 was not just built for the OnePlus 2, it was built for every phone that could use it. For example, something like the G Flex 2 from LG did have NFC. I mean, it's pretty clear at this point, as long as Android has fragmentation, different manufacturers with different phones having different capabilities, chip makers like Qualcomm will have to keep their micro code base as diverse as possible to cater to everybody's needs. And this means there is a toll on performance. Now moving on from processors and all that technical jargon, let's take a look at storage. Apple has employed a special M-series controller in their latest iPhones now that lets the A12 Bionic address read and write storage as fast as you can on a MacBook. That is seriously impressive and an area where Android still kinda lags behind. Now even when you come to GPU, Apple since they have moved to in-house custom-made silicon has been crushing their Android counterparts. Why? Again, it comes to that one same dreaded word, optimization. On Android, GPUs have to be ready for a plethora of scaling issues, different refresh rates, different display resolutions. On the Apple side, there are only very few specific screen sizes and that makes things incredibly easier for the GPU. Developers also often prefer iOS over Android when it comes to developing their apps. And that's because iOS support for developers is way better than Android Studio. Research has shown that apps on iOS use significantly lesser resources to write and to run. 
That is because developers know the phones and the target screen sizes, they can plan their apps around that. As for Android, well, we all know what happens with scaling issues and notches, right? I mean, you guys do remember the PUBG bug on the Poco F1. This is one of the reasons why even Google's own apps like Creator Studio and YouTube get new features first on iOS. It's common to see that happen. Anyway, this video has already gone way too much in depth and technical than I actually intended it to be. So I'm gonna stop here. I'll leave a few links in the description if you guys wanna check out more about kernel architecture, custom microcodes and app scaling on iOS. You know, go ahead, read those. Uh, they would be helpful. Now coming to the question on how a brand like OnePlus has been able to come up with phones that have been able to beat iPhones on speed tests. Well, OnePlus achieves this by targeting the one so-called weakness of Apple. Apple likes to make things look pretty and there are a lot of fluid transitions included into iOS. And the reason Apple does this is so that you can get a feel of the smoothness of the phone but these transitions do take some time and OnePlus with their Oxygen OS cuts down on transition times drastically. Additionally, all that extra RAM OnePlus throws in helps in retaining more apps in memory, hence OnePlus wins more speed tests. Wrapping all of it up, this is basically why iPhones are usually faster than their Android counterparts. The reasons mentioned here are way too fundamental in my opinion to be ever, you know, corrected. Maybe Google can do better with the Afixia OS. Who knows, that's all speculation at this point. So that's it for this video, I thought it was an interesting topic to share with you. So go ahead, share it with your friends and family if you can. Thumbs up, thumbs down based on what you felt about it. Also subscribe and turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon if you haven't yet. Thanks a lot for watching, till next time, my name's Ash, you've been watching C4 Retech and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day, bye bye.